very pleased tonight to, to introduce our uh, program presenters. Uh, the name of the program is Our Favorite National Parks, and it's with Ken and Judy Harbison. And Ken and Judy have been on a quest for, well, I'm sure they'll tell you how long they've been doing this, but they have visited, uh, the time that they communicated with me, and this may have changed, they visited 46 of the nation's national parks and 30 national monuments, and they've camped in most of them. So they're going to do a selection of their favorite parks tonight. Um, their emphasis uh, will be on the sites that you would see by hiking, backpacking, and rafting, rather than just uh, looking out the window of the vehicle. So please uh, help me welcome Ken and Judy Harvester. It's still it's $50. Um, you have to 
be 62 or, or older. And you also get half price on camping and uh, for some of the, the uh, Ranger-led tours. Uh, some people may recognize this passport book, which was created in 86. So it's a, it's a souvenir book. You, uh, the, that when you go to a, a national park site, they have a, a place with a, with a rubber stamp, kept up to date every day. Uh, that, so you can stamp your own record there. Uh, and also, they, that every year they issue a set of, uh, of paper stamps, like, like this one, that uh, commemorate different of the national parks or, or other, uh, other locations within the national park system. So it's, it makes for a kind of nice uh, souvenir. Uh, this, another kind of souvenir that's, that's coming in, Play is uh, there's a series of national park quarters. It started in, in 2010, and every year there will be five of the missions. So this is the first year, and we will see some of these again. Now, I, I went on the web and said, so well, you know, which favorite parks? Well, what are the favorite parks? Well, what I found was that nobody can agree entirely. <laughs> Most everybody. Grand Canyon, Yosemite, Yellowstone, Acadia, and Zion are, are high on their list. But after that, uh, it kind of thins out, and there are 10 parks that got only one vote among the 11 uh, lists. So this, this is National Geographic, this is Backpacker Magazine, uh, Gork, etc. So I will, I'll be talking about roughly half of the national parks, and in particular, I, I will, uh, and, and there will be, in general, for those, uh, not a lot of slides, uh, but for the, the, the top ones, the ones our favorite, the ones we visited multiple times, we'll have, we'll have uh, more slides. So I'll start with the Northeast region, the 94 NPS sites in it, but only two parks, as it turns out, Acadia and Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's the sign for Acadia that was originally called Lafayette National Park, but not uh, Lafayette actually never visited. <laughs> so, renamed for the, uh, the French settlement, which was originally in this area. So down at the bottom, I give the, the year that was founded, how big the area is, how many visitors uh, there are annually, and, and at the end, the state that happens to be. So this is, uh, up on the left there, you see the, the coin, um, and, and that was issued in 2012. And this is the Bass Harbor headlight. Uh, and this, this picture was taken almost at the same uh, vantage point, as you, as you can see. And the one on the right is the other side of, of, the, of the light, with the bell. Uh, Acadia owes its uh, origin to uh, George Dorr. Uh, he uh, convinced a number of his rich friends to buy up land in this, in this area, kind of silently. And then when the National Park system was created. They donated uh, the land to the Park Service initially as a national monument, and then two years later, Congress uh, declared it a national park. He became the uh, supervisor and a big promoter of it, uh, drawing in more more land donations. So there are 120 miles of hiking trails in Acadia. Uh, so here are our kids a while ago. Uh, an outlook on one of the trails overlooking the, the bays and the islands. Uh, J.D. Rockefeller Jr. Uh, built about 45 miles of carriage road in this. This was for the enjoyment of, of his, uh, uh, his friends and, and visitors. Uh, and then in the, in the 40s, this was turned over to the Park Service so that everybody could enjoy it. Uh, there are no uh, motorized vehicles on this, bicycles, hiking, etc., but, but not cars. So the, the stonework is beautiful here. It was designed by Olmsted, Jim Jr. Here's one of the famous uh, hikes, uh, Beehive Hike. Uh, and you see the, the arrow here, that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the hikers on, on the trail. Uh, and they're right, it is steep. And this is what, in the upper parts, uh, in order to get through these ledges, they've installed these iron rungs. Uh, let me just make a comment that the week after we were there, last there, 
someone on an adjacent trail, half a mile away, very similar to this, fell 60 feet. Ouch. So this is not a national park, but it's so good that I just have to mention. Chickatig and Assateague, Maryland, Virginia, uh, known for the wild horses, and here they are marching right through our campsite. They're wild, they fight, they, they kick, but they're, uh, many of them are, are familiar with people. Birds, birds are fantastic. Uh, great variety of them, and, and the, particularly the birds in the foreground, the, the black skimmers, and they are so much fun to, to watch. They, they fly along the, just above the water with the lower bill uh, under the water, and if they detect a, a fish, then they reach down and try to grab it. So they are just amazing to watch. Uh, box squirrel is an endangered species in this area. Okay, the southeast region. Uh, large region uh, has seven national parks in it. Uh, in, include, and included in this is the Virgin Islands. The Great Smoky Mountain National Park is the most visited park. Uh, Nine million visitors a year. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is there is a major highway that goes through it, but uh, <laughs> it's close to Nashville. Uh, and some other centers, and it's free. And so people go there for recreation. So, the, so hmm? it, it is a large park, fortunately, because of, that's, that's uh, more than twice as much as any other single park. It is a, a World Heritage Site. You'll see the symbol on the, on the bottom here, and we'll see this again. All the Smoky Mountains for obvious reason, and that's, that's caused by air pollution from the terpenes from the trees. Now, what we noticed in our, our last trip was the large number of dead trees, and they're hemlocks. They've been killed by the woolly adagid, which is, is uh, spreading down the east coast. It's affected about half of the uh, hemlock, uh, the, the eastern hemlock uh, uh, land, and it's, uh, Maybe they're, they're getting a uh, possible predator came from Asia, um, but it's, it's, just, it's been devastating to, to hemlocks. Uh, a lot of recreation here. There's over 200 waterfalls in, in the area. And this is the high point of the Appalachian Trail, Kingman's, Kingman's Dome. The AT is to the immediate uh, left of the, of the picture, just off the, off the picture. So it's at the high point of the AG is 6,600 feet. Now, I said that, that's the tail. Uh, so that goes through 14 of our states. Uh, there's a symbol, uh, this, the white, white bar is the characteristic uh, trail marker. And there are uh, about 250 completers each year, of which uh, at least one of them is in the audience, I think probably more. This is the northern terminus and in Baxter State Park, the Mount Katahdin, um, at 5,200 feet. Now, my favorite area of what we've seen is, is in New Hampshire. We've got these high ridges, uh, trails along the ridge, which are just fantastic views. Uh, the highest point on, on the AP in the northeast is in Washington. The, not with the world's worst weather or America's worst weather. About 1,200 feet below it is uh, the AMC hut. We've seen several of the AMC huts. Uh, Lake of the Clouds has uh, uh, 90 beds, and the through hikers can uh, sleep on the table for free. <laughs> Here's the southern terminus. It's on Springer Mountain in Georgia. Okay, Everglades. Uh, World Heritage Site. A uh, large park, a uh, very large park, uh, and, and wonderfully well attended. So, birds are one of the primary attractions, huge flocks of bird, mixed birds of all, of all sorts, large, large water birds. Um, wood stork, uh, this one was taken by her daughter. Uh, so, I when a picture is not mine, in general I put the more I put something down on the lower right hand side. Uh, 
Uh, that, it's an endangered species, uh, great blue heron. Kind of like, like a rule of thirds. <laughs> Also well known for alligators. Now, the next slide. This is the biggest threat ever. Uh, in the past, we were worried about fires or, or drainage or whatever, but the, the Burmese pythons have been absolutely devastating to the wildlife in, in Everglades. Also, to a lesser extent, rock pythons from, uh, from Africa or anacondas from South America. Uh, they came from pretty much from snakes that were released by owners. When your python eats your, your pet cat, it gets put out in the wilderness. Some of them probably came in and, uh, from pet shops that were destroyed uh, during Hurricane Andrew. But it's grown to an enormous population, tens of thousands of these, of these things. Now, they will eat almost anything. The smallest eggs, mice, but uh, they can take deer, 70, 76 pounds a year. Uh, and they can take uh, all but the largest alligators. And their only, uh, their only, their only predator is large alligators or man. In the surveys, there's a, uh, for years, for decades, there have been surveys uh, every evening uh, for, for animals. Uh, so there's a, a lot of records of that. And in 2011, uh, the rabbits and the foxes had disappeared. None were seen in any of the surveys that were done. 99% uh, of the raccoons and 99% of the possums had disappeared. Uh, a lot of the deer, even off bat 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 bobcats. <coughs> um, the reason there's so many is that, that they reproduce prodigiously. This, uh, this female had uh, 59 fertilized eggs, some had 89, some had more than, more than 100 at the time. Uh, and uh, they spread. They, the uh, Burmese python can swim in the, in the ocean, so they're swimming between the keys. Mm. Now, what do we do about it? Uh, well, I think it was, something was tried a year ago. It's the Great Python Challenge. Uh, in January and February, four weeks uh, a year ago, and they issued 1,600 permits to, to hunters. Uh, and as an inducement, they offered several prizes, including 1,500 for the largest. And this intrepid group of hunters captured 68 of them. <laughs> okay, the Midwest region. There are seven parks in here, and uh, the, the blue there uh, shows the previous organization of the, the national park. So this is actually a kind of a conglomeration of what was uh, parts of three uh, former uh, <coughs> park districts. But a, a large district in the, in the middle of the, the country. Wind Cave, this was, I found this quite enjoyable. It's not, it's uh, only about a half a million of people go there. Uh, it's a fairly old park, uh, 1903. Uh, this is the national, the only national opening port. It's a small hole about 10 inches in diameter, so no, no humans had initially been, been in it. Uh, got his name from the fact that a horse rider had his, his uh, hat blown off by the air can. Mm. Out of it. The air, air can come out for a week at a time, which means that there is some huge volume inside the cave. It has not been uh, very thoroughly uh, explored. So uh, openings were made into it, and now it's, now it's a major national park. Uh, Judy and Carol uh, went on the candlelight, historic candlelight tour. Uh, I did the wild caving tour. <laughs> In order to do it, you've got to pass this test. You have to be able to crawl through this opening, which is eight and a half inches by 24 inches. Um, and there's a, uh, a ranger standing on top so that you can't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> and also to help you if you get stuck. <laughs> now, notice, the, notice the guy in the red shirt. This is Peter, a red, red plaid shirt. We'll see him again. He managed to somehow force himself through, the, uh, through that opening. You can see that he's broad-chested. And... So this is a, this, 
This is the Wild Cave tour uh, in the dark, of course. Uh, and, and it is a, it's not a trivial uh, trip. Uh, so here uh, we're chimneying across a, a little a crevice about, about 10 feet deep. The chimney, you put your feet on one side, you put your back on the other. Uh, and then here, we, here was the exit from it, a little just a rope loop so that you can get yourself down. Uh, Carol was not allowed to go on this, on this trip because she wasn't tall enough to do the bridge, was their explanation. Here's Peter. <laughs> He had great trouble. And at one point, he just exhausted himself trying to get through a, a tight area. And after that, he, he, was, he was pretty much spent. So we were pulling him through, or at one time, I went in behind him backwards, so he'd have my feet to push on. <laughs> so by the time we got out, we were two and a half hours late. <laughs> 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 so where are they? And they sent down a, a group from the, from the exit to see what had happened. This was kind of unprecedented. <laughs> there bison there? No, bison. There are bison. Uh, there, in the 19th century, there were tens of millions of bison. But then the army went on a campaign to annihilate the bison. And by uh, 1910, there were only about a thousand left in the United States, and most of those were in zoos, or, or, or some in, in reserve. So they virtually succeeded in, in uh, turning it extinct, except for what was in the zoos. Well, in, starting in, in 1913, uh, there were 20 bison that were reintroduced in, into uh, Wing Cave uh, National Park. Uh, and that's grown to uh, several hundred. Uh, and actually, uh, the first group that came, came from New York City Zoo. And they are reproduced. Speaking of bison, uh, at Theodore Roosevelt National Park, we went out on this on the trail in the, in the foreground here. And on our way back, this herd of bison came marching through between <laughs> us and our car. Uh, we backed up the hill a little bit. Unfortunately, they didn't pay any attention to it to us. Uh, the thing about bison, uh, there are more. Uh, injuries from bison than any other a wild animal in the U.S. Inter-mountain region, a lot of parks, 18 parks in this area. Big Bend in, in Texas, uh, not quite so well visited yet. Uh, the Capitan Reef is uh, kind of runs through it, so that's that's the uh, edge reef at the edge of the Great Inland Sea during the Permian period. The, uh, the sea was about 2,500 feet deep, so this these are uh, the reef was then at the edge of, of, of waterfall. It was hot. <laughs> and dry. The, uh, when we talked with the ranchers, said they had not gotten. Uh, significant rain in 10 months. Everything was desiccated. Even, even prickly birds were, were badly dried out. All the grass was you know, brown and, and dead looking. The Rio Grande? Well, in some seasons, uh, there's white water rafting there. Uh, when we were there, you could walk a place, across it uh, in places uh, without getting your knees wet. So it was no area at all. They had bought uh, six uh, patrol boats to try to intercept drugs and, and, and things. Well, uh, they're sitting in dry dock because there's no, there's no water to, to, for them to go in. Because of the drought, shortage of food, uh, animals were moving down into populated areas where they, where they wouldn't normally be. This was a sign in our campground, one section of, of our campground, uh, for the mountain land. And there were several, there was a trail we wanted to go on that was closed for the, for the same reason. Also, bears were there. Carlsbad. There are more than uh, 118 caves in Carlsbad. The main cave, Carlsbad Caverns itself, 
as this is the natural opening, and, and there is a walkway where you can go down if you wish, which we did for one of our, our tours. So here's the map. The natural entrance is up at the top here. Uh, and then there are four tours within the uh, within the cabinet that is led by the uh, by the rangers. And there are two that are in other caves. So this is the kind of, of ornamentation you see in here. Just very, very elaborate. Huge rooms. Uh, King's Palace. The big room is 250. Uh, Hall of Giants. Some of, some of these domes are as high as a six-story building. They're extremely impressive. This is a lighted cave. This is on walkways, on, on paved walkways. And in the evening, you sit uh, at an amphitheater and watch uh, something in excess of a million Mexican three-tailed bats. It, it's just amazing, the, the flutter and the activity. Uh, we know about the white nose syndrome, uh, spread uh, down through the, through the east, through Appalachia. It's absolutely devastating for, uh, for bats, for almost all species of, of bats. Uh, and the national parks are dealing with, uh, dealing with the fact that it has not yet reached Carlsbad, but they're taking the precaution. You have to wear clean clothes at every trip. If, if you went on one trip, can't wear the same clothes on another trip, even at the same park. So they're trying to take precautions. Also, sterilize our boots. We spent one place. We spent uh, five minutes sitting in a, with our boots in a, in a bucket of, of, of sterilizer. Okay. Here's one of the other caves for which there, there is a guided tour. Uh, Slaughter Canyon Cave. It was also known initially it was known as New Cave. Here's our, uh, here's our, our ranger leading, leading the trip. Uh, in order to get there, you have to climb up this, this trail. Uh, there's a, uh, something over a 500 feet elevation thing. And if you get to, the, get to the cave entrance and you're huffing and puffing, they will ask you not to go in. But they don't want to have to rescue you. <laughs> so it's not a light cave, uh, and it's not paved, but there are marks there. And, uh, there are helps like this knotted rope in some of the tougher areas, but it's a walking cave, um, and you know, anybody needs a chip can do it. Uh, this is known as the Klansman. It was featured in King Solomon's Mine, a movie from 60 years ago. Uh, huge, you can see the scale. Uh, the other cave uh, is a, a wilder cave. Uh, spider cave, and the uh, ranger goes down first and grabs the, takes the grabber and looks around for the rattlesnakes because they like to come down into the nice and cool. And then they put them into the box, and after everything gets done, they release them outside. <laughs> Of the World Heritage Site. 
In it, there are 600 cliff dwellings and quite a number of surface uh, ruins. So the uh, probably most famous uh, is a cliff house. It was occupied for only uh, about 100 years uh, and was, uh, was then abandoned during the Great Southwestern Drought. So large, quite large structure, beautifully built. Balcony house is another, and you can see how well it's protected. It's got this uh, huge overhang that perfectly protects it from above, and there's a ladder uh, as the access from the bottom. So there's the ladder, 32 feet uh, to get up to that. But well, once you get up, you're not in yet. You have to go through this, this narrow little tunnel, which makes it perfectly protected. Here's one of the keys in uh, the balcony house. Um, so this is a meeting place, uh, sacred uh, religious site. Uh, the middle here uh, is the fire pit, and, and this is, is actually just the windscreen for the air that is coming in here, the replenishment air. And this small hole here, roughly six inches in diameter or so, uh, is the, the single who the uh, symbolic entrance to the underworld. Normally, in almost all cases, the entrance to the to uh, Kiva is through a hole in the roof and on the ladder. It's pyramid. Another place uh, of great uh, historical value is Chaco Culture National Historical Park. Uh, it's a World Heritage Site. And this is uh, Pueblo Bonito, which was occupied for uh, about the three centuries. Um, and it had 800 rooms in it. So it was, this is basically a community. Nearby is uh, Chifil Kettle. And uh, so here's a view uh, very close to what was used in the coin uh, in uh, 2012. Here's a map of, that, that was, was posted up there. Uh, and so we see the, uh, here, Chetro Kettle, Pueblo Bonito. These lines are roads that have been cleared uh, in, in a sort of basically desert, uh, generally in very straight lines for long distance. The one that goes to the north uh, goes 60 miles. Most places just straight as an arrow. Hmm. So here, Judy is uh, siding along the alignment for that, that road. And you see there's a, a, a canyon in the way. What did they do? Down into the canyon, <laughs> back up on the Jackson <laughs> staircase. Hello, Jackson. Certainly <laughs> <laughs> challenging. Uh, at the end of it is uh, a national monument called Aztec. Ruins, that's actually not anything to do with it. Um, so this kiva was excavated in 1921 and then it was reconstructed on the same plan with modern materials. It's about 40 feet across and it's absolutely impressive. It's, it's, it gives you the feeling like a, a Gothic cathedral. Uh, the, here's the fire pit, and these long troughs apparently were used uh, for growing ceremonial corn at the start of the season. But uh, they have music playing, and it, it's, it's just not an awe-inspiring uh, thing to, to sit there in the Rocky Mountain National Park, uh, highly visited, three, three million visitors. And there are 150 lakes in there. Uh, Inf Lake, with all the water lilies. Uh, Green Lake, uh, picture off the web. Peak in the background. Uh, the highest peak is Long Peak uh, at 14,000 uh, feet. Uh, there are 60 peaks above 12,000 feet in the park. So here's the trail up, and one of those prime points is the keyhole. And then up to the top of the peak. Uh, there's a, a road, a trail ridge road, running along. Uh, 
up above 12,000 feet. So we've got views of the sheep and the camp. It, it has
Uh, and if you notice carefully, that's a double star up there. When we got to Horn Creek Campground, we were greeted with this sign. Uh, water, if you could find water, it would be radioactive or contaminated. Uh, why? Well, there was a uranium mine, the Orphan Mine, it was in operation for a, a while, um, and it's, it's finally been moved. Uh, they took the tailings from the mine and threw it over the edge into the canyon, thereby contaminating two of the watersheds. This, this critter is unique. Uh, the snake is found only in the Grand Canyon and only on the south side. It's not, it, hasn't, it hasn't swung over to the north side. Uh, I was real fortunate. I saw three snakes in four days. Uh, there, is, there is a substantial amount of wildlife in the, uh, in the Grand Canyon. Now, the South Rim gets 90% of the visitors, uh, 7,200 feet at the Grand Canyon Village, and it's, the terrain there is characterized by large canyons, deep canyon amphitheaters, very open. The North Rim is rather different. It gets far fewer, uh, 10 times fewer visitors, and it's mostly buttes with narrow canyons in between, and it's higher, therefore colder, and in fact, it's, it's closed until May in the winter. Here's one of the attractions, uh, Rainbow Falls, uh, with all the, all the growth on it, the monkey flowers. It's, it's perennial, a perennial stream. And in the fall, the aspens are just gorgeous. So we went on, on a nine-day rafting trip with the Moki Man and his outfitter. Uh, so that's me with the camera. And that's the kind of view you get from the, from the river. Just you know, rising above you, greenery down by the, by the uh, river. Uh, there are 160 rapids in the Grand Canyon. This one is Granite Rapids. Uh, the waves are 12 to 15 feet high. And this is known as the washing machine. <laughs> Uh, we had to put our cameras away for that because of the, uh, we had to have it be holding on as hard as, as well as we could. Because that's a, this was a class nine on the, on the western scale of the uh, So this is this is what it looks like for, for a lesser rat. And afterward, we get out the buckets and have to empty out the rats. Here is the most feared of the rat. The rapids, Lava Falls uh, Rapids, it's a 38-foot drop, and it has a number of hazards in it. And there have been a couple of deaths, um, but a couple. Um, so we scouted out before, before we went through, and uh, the, the waves went over our heads, but uh, no damage. Nobody lost from our ship, no, or from our raft. However, for the the, uh, I think this, this must have been probably a, a private trip that went just before us. Um, this, raft, this raft had three uh, riders in it initially, and only the guy standing remained after it had gone through the raft. Mm -hmm. We all did pick them up, but uh, two of them were rejected. Mm -hmm. So every day on this trip, we did a hike in the morning to side caverns or side canyons or uh, up to uh, plateaus and, and things. So here was a great place to wash off. Uh, Elves Chasm, which is very old rock. Uh, here are the Narrows and Deer Creek. Every, every trip stops at Deer Creek because there's so much to see. Long, long Creek, waterfalls, just a lot of, a lot of things uh, with, the, with the water, a lot of things going along it. Uh, big, tall waterfalls. Mm -hmm. And some of the more adventurous <laughs> up to, to get into this narrow slot. If you're standing in front of an agave roasting pit, this, this was used by the Native Americans for hundreds of years for a roasting agave. Roasting agave uh, as, as part of the spring ceremony. And it's most impressive. It sits on a prominence right over the river. I can see 
just a little piece of it right here. Uh, and, and it's just a most impressive place. So the ceremonies must have been fantastic. It's about 30 feet across. In the spring, we've got the wildflowers and great variety. One of the Germans that were on, on trip said that this is, they call this the mother-in-law stool. <laughs> <laughs> so here are the, the layers in this area. So the, the Grand Canyon, we, we talked about Kaibad limestone, limestone on top in the Permian period. Uh, so starting from the Cambrian and then the, the uplift and stuff is pre-Cambrian. Now, Zion, well, we have an overlap. It's the same rocks, it's just, a, it's just higher in the sediment. So, uh, in the period of dinosaurs, two of those periods are in Zion. So all of what was in uh, Grand Canyon previously has all been eroded away. And then Bryce Canyon goes even further. So the, the two later of the uh, dinosaur periods are here and a little bit in, into the uh, age of the man. So it's Zion, now a very popular park. Uh, this is one of the kind of common things, angels landing. It's a, it's a good 1,200 foot uh, ascent. And the way you get up there is to go up all the wiggles. <laughs> that takes you part way up and takes you to a landing where you can, can look into the, the valley. But then to get up from that, it's chains. Uh, on, on, a, on a very uh, steep slope and drop off. And we followed the, the chains up until they ran out. Mm -hmm. And we decided that they ran out and we were not. <laughs> so the trail continues up this ridge to the top. And Ken Hibbard uh, took this picture. So this is uh, looking out now from the top into the, the uh, Zion Valley, the, the, the Valley of the, the Virgin River. Across the river from Angel's Landing is, is this place, Weeping Rock. The, there is water continually dripping off the face of it, so and you walk behind it and it's just lush growth in there. Another place on this is uh, the Hidden Canyon Trail. It really was not too heavy with this one. But the <laughs> down sloping rocks and a 1,500 foot drop off. <laughs> But it hadn't changed. As we were going back, uh, we ran into somebody and he immediately lay down on the trail and said, walk over me. I'm not going to try to pass anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> another, another famous hike is a water hike in the Virgin River Narrows. It's 16 miles. So you've got to make sure there aren't any floods coming. But uh, this, is a, this is a famous hike. Uh, in, in many places, the walls rise 2,000 feet above. There's a shuttle, required shuttle bus system in Zion now, and actually there are uh, four national parks where, where you have to take uh, uh, shuttles to, to get to certain periods. There are others where, where it's offered and it's voluntary. Um, so the, the only way not to uh, take the shuttle is either to hike or if you have a disabled vehicle, uh, disabled care vehicle. So Grand Canyon in particular, several places you can't get to hike uh, far. Rice, very, very famous area, and we recognize <coughs> these uh, voodoo's and very elaborate uh, erosion of the sandstone. Variety of structures, some of which have names, but what, I, what we found was that it's much more impressive than the world. <coughs> Looking up at the spires is, is much more interesting than looking down on them. Well trailed, it's about five, it's only 500 feet. Now. And we've got those narrow slot canyons that, that you can't you can't really appreciate from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And this is Queen Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a corgi behind or not. <laughs> <laughs> Arches. There are 
2,000 arches in Arches National Park, or more than anywhere else in the, in the world. Um, and that's a popular park. Uh, this is the second long, longest uh, arch in the world, the longest one in the U.S., the Landscape Park. Uh, our first visit there, we could walk uh, beneath it, uh, but that's been closed off because there have been rock falls from it, two major ones. Uh, and nobody's been hit yet, but uh, they're taking the precautions. You can see how thin it is, so it's, it's not going to last very long. So, you know, get out there if you want to see it. <laughs> Here's the wall arch. We go back uh, 25 years ago, uh, there was this arch here. It was the 12th largest in the, in the park. Uh, but in 2008, it collapsed. And then in 2011, even more of it collapsed. This piece is that one. Again, you need to get out there. Uh, Delicate Arch, this is the most famous one, so it's on the edge of a 500-foot canyon, and you approach it from the other side. And this is just a fantastic view. This is big um, oval here. You know, as, when you come up the trail, you don't see it until you come right out on, onto this, uh, onto that view like this. This is Double Arch. You may remember it from Raiders of the Lost Ark, from the first part of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And there are these fins. Uh, this one's called the organ. Wall Street is another, another section. And then a whole variety of things. Balance, rock, and this one on the right kind of reminds me of a guy with a huge nose. <laughs> Here's the fiery furnace. You have to get a permit to go into there, and you're strongly advised to go with, with a, a ranger because it's extremely easy to get lost. Mm. <laughs> and it gets very, very hot. So these are arches, and, that, and that, that's defined as ones that are formed by free thaw. <coughs> now, uh, when something like this is formed by water, it's usually called a bridge. And so here's natural bridges, national monument. So here's my huge height reference mm -hmm. there. Uh, and you'll notice also on the left the, uh, the debris that was, uh, that was collected during the flood. So you get a scale of how, how deep the, the water gets uh, in, the, in the spring floods. So this, this one is 225 feet. Grand Tetons National Park, popular park. So uh, that's the that's the main peak. Grand Teton at, at 13770. And this is the Snake River Overlook. And that's the with the peaks in the background. So it's 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 meadows and whatever. A large amount of it initially was was uh, ranch land, and the Rockefellers had their uh, had donated a lot, a lot of land to this park also. The last uh, the last donation was made by Larry Rockefeller in uh, February 2009. Hmm. A lot of recreation on the water, and also hiking and uh, horse riding. And here's a historic uh, rustic uh, chapel of configuration. And there's a window behind the altar with a view of the mountains. It's just really awe inspiring. <coughs> Yellowstone, one of the most popular parks. Uh, and it was chosen for the, the, uh, the Civil Quarter um, in the initial uh, 2010. It's a national heritage. And World Heritage Site. Uh, we stayed in the Old Faithful Inn. It's just a beautiful building. Um, it was built in 1904, so it's all this wood construction. Uh, and up here, the fifth level, is a crow's nest where the orchestra plays to, to entertain the diners and the, the people in the lobby. This is just a fantastic building. Really beautiful. Beautiful work. 
faithful. What's that? So it, it's period does vary, but it's, but it's around an hour. Uh, the average height is 145 feet. So now I went out, and, and there's a schedule published of, of what we expect to to, to rub. I went out uh, in the early morning, and this marmot and I were the only ones there at the start of the year. <laughs> there were probably 20 people by the time we got under there. But we were alone, okay? But at midday, there were thousands of people there. Ten feet, but they had to move these, these uh, steps back, the chairs back, to make, more, make a larger so we could fit more people. So, uh, in the middle of the day, everything is just quite the uh, Yellowstone, it turns out, is the largest volcano in North America. Uh, the cholera is, is 30, 35 by 45 miles across. Uh, it wasn't realized there was a cholera until, until the age of the airplanes. They couldn't really tell it from the ground. Now, it's, uh, well, the last eruption was, was 100,000 years ago. Uh, but it has been huge. The ash has gone as far as Louisiana in some of these eruptions. Just total, and, and, and has had a devastated the stuff in it on the long way. It's going to go again someday. Yeah, well, or, or get there, get there and see it before. <laughs> so, there are a large number of thermal features. On the left here, uh, the one in the middle here, this little one, is turbine glacier. Geyser, and it goes every 20 minutes. And then after about 25 eruptions, then vent on the left oops, oops, sorry, vent on the left starts, and it, that's coupled with grand uh, geyser. And then finally, when, when grand really gets going, it takes it takes over the whole of the flow. So uh, this is the highest regular uh, geyser. Uh, it's 200 feet. Uh, steamboat is the largest, but it's it's very irregular. It was 50-year period when it didn't erupt, it did erupt in 2008. Uh, but so this this is one that, that you see the schedule for and plan to be out there, which is what, exactly what we do. Mammoth hot springs, so gravity deposits, uh, very very pretty. Uh, there are a number of hot pools, steaming pools, and then. Algae of all sorts uh, around it that are, that are evolving. Colored, colored algae around the outside. And, and generally, uh, this kind of bluish, very clear color of the Yellowstone River is, is quite a flow. It's a very, very vigorous and uh, <coughs> uh, the, the valley in which it goes is it's quite, it's quite colorful rock in it. Artist, it's an artist point there. There's recreation there. So, oh, even after a couple of years, it's just starting to get uh, a little bit, uh, just one tiny bit visible here. Uh, winter. Summer, that's the busy period. 85% of visitors go in summer. But in winter, only two and a half percent, or fewer than 100,000 people, go to it. Most uh, most people get around with snowcats or uh, snowmobiles are are permitted on certain other roads. We got things pretty much to ourselves there. So, so we were skiing, and we often didn't see we see people. Uh, and so we had the burnt burnt trees here. You can see the rainbow. The guys, they don't turn the guys in the rock. This is one up, up near the continental divide. And the animals come down uh, into, the, into the thermal areas because the snow is melted back. And so bison, we can get down actually to the grass and, and to feed without having to, to move a whole lot of, of snow out of the way. So uh, bison in particular are, are heavily down in the population. So when we were skiing around, we sort of had to change our moves a few times. Uh -huh. <laughs> a glacier. Uh, Ken Reed talked about glacier uh, a year ago. It's, uh, it's a world 
World Heritage Site. There's 740 miles of trail there. Mm -hmm. The for the, the <coughs> that shows, shows Mount Goat, and that goes to a long lens. And get a picture of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Avalanche Lake. This is a kind of interesting one. You see a stream running down here. There used to be a glacier up at the top that would uh, make buck. You should call them icebergs or something like that. The, the, uh, the glacier would break off and they would come crashing down uh, into the lake. Well, now it has melted way back uh, into the valley and, it, and all we get is the, the glacial melt. And here's, here are some of the major glaciers in the Glacier National Park. There were 150 of them. Uh, a century and a half ago, in 2013, 25 were left. And within the next about 10 years, there will be no active glaciers in the glacier National Park. What are they going to call them? So, uh, great views there, rugged, beautiful lakes. All those melting glaciers make for lots of, of rivers, streams. Uh, there, are, there are 200 lakes of area uh, larger than five acres. So, so St. Mary's Lake. Uh, here's Logan Pass. So this is on the road that goes through Glacier. And the, so here's the, here's the road. And in many places, it's carved right out of the side of the mountain. Pacific uh, West region, so this is the last region. Uh, 17 parks. Great place, not a very well known, not very much visited yet. Uh, it's known for the bristlecone pine. The oldest tree in the world is here. This is what the bristlecones look like. And here's the stump of the, what was the oldest bristlecone, mm. almost, uh, almost 5,000 years old. Mm. It was cut down in, uh, in, in 1964. The uh, coin shows the Methuselah tree, uh, which is now, now the oldest tree in the world, uh, at an undisclosed location. <laughs> <laughs> Wheel Peak, uh, lower elevation, lots of lower trees, high up, we have these alpine lakes, lovely lakes. And here's Layman Caves, that was incorporated into uh, Great Basin now. So here's the original Nashville entrance, which is now open only to the bats. <laughs> Inside, a number of really amazing uh, formations. There are these uh, cave shields. So these are they're di flat discs, and then with all the drapery coming down from it. This is a structure which is known uh, in only about 30 caves in the world. A very unusual, something like 300 of them in this cave. Here's a, 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 a structure, this something like a turnip, uh, that uh, are, are not known anywhere else. Uh, what they said is not known anywhere else in the world. Yosemite, one of those very popular parks, and uh, came into this, uh, became a park very, very early in the system. World Heritage Site. So this is Yosemite Valley, and that, that, the view of El Capitan uh, was chosen for the, for the coin. So uh, Capitan, that's the largest monolith, granite monolith in the world. Um, Half Dome, which you recognize, a few gas pictures earlier today. Bridal Vale Falls here. Uh, and this, is, this valley is crowded with people. But if you get out of uh, Glacier Point, uh, you, can, you can get grand views and not be in crowds. So here's a view of Yosemite Falls, it's the highest in North America. And all the mist down here, and it's kind of a trace of a rainbow in it. Half Dome take, taken from uh, on the way to uh, Tuolumne Meadows. And so 
here is the climb. <laughs> There's two chains there over the other edges. Uh, there are a lot of ranger uh, programs there. Um, here's the Grizzly Giant, which is the oldest tree in the park. This, uh, this area, uh, Devil's Post Pond, used to be part of Yosemite, but the timber industry uh, petitioned uh, Congress to, to turn it over to the Bureau of Land Management in 2009. In 2010, uh, they made a petition to blow up the Devil's Post pile in order to get rock to make a dam or a sawmill. Fortunately, the people got into that, the people we call environmentalists now, I guess, and uh, got to the president who, who declared it a national monument in early 2011 and, and stopped the, uh, the timber, timber industry. Uh, the timber industry uh, ceased in, uh, in just a little over a, a decade. They, they were allowed to continue to, to harvest. So, uh, if the dam had been built, it would have been used. <laughs> so, Kings Canyon, or rather deep, uh, steep canyon, and you can see why the, the bigger of the, of the river at the bottom of it. Fast erosion. Redwood National Park, nearby, again, a World Heritage Site. So, this is the tallest tree in the world now. Uh, well, not, not this tree, but the Hyperion tree. It's in an undisclosed location. <laughs> the reason they're running. Uh, the mother of the forest, about 50 feet shorter, uh, is, is one which is readily accessible, and the, uh, the, the rangers are there to, to talk about it. Uh, the redwoods, the, the trees are so tall that the redwoods can't quite get enough water by capillary action at home. So they, they tap the fog which comes in. So they kind of require, to get to this height, they're required to be in a region where you get the fall. Okay. Also part of the western region is our uh, two parts, which, which are in Hawaii, Haleakala, Maui. And we went up on, on the top of the, the volcano to watch the sunrise. Very, very impressive thing to do. But it is cold up there. <laughs> And you can now see it very close. So, uh, so here's the, the crater. It's, it's about 3,000 feet from the rim. And uh, there are these ash piles, and lava flows, and this is called Pele's Paint Pot. Mm -hmm. Here's a unique uh, species uh, called a silver sword. Uh, they, uh, they are actually sunflowers, but they, they have a habit somewhat like the agave. They, they live for about 25 years, and then they put up a flower stalk and die. <laughs> so you can, and then the seeds around them germ. But they're found only in two places, both in Hawaii. Uh, the Hawaiian goose, the nene, unique, unique species. Okay. Uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the, uh, on the Big Island. And that too has a coin. Uh, this, is, this is the caldera, the Kilauea caldera. It's about two miles across. It's a view from the rim into it. And then down in the middle is the Halimamamau fire pit, which has been in uh, eruption uh, since 1983. Hmm. Uh, nearby uh, was, was Kilauea Hiki, uh, which erupted uh, at a very high eruption in 1955, but it's been inactive, uh, so it's just kind of steamy, uh, and, and you can walk through it. A couple of places are, are, are blocked off, particularly where, where the vent is. The uh, ash formed this huge mass of hill. So every, every year there's, there's plenty of the rapid flowing a lot of very, very, uh, very fluid lava, it flows across the, the landscape. Here's a very, what I thought was a very interesting formation. The lava had come through about four feet deep. Uh, the crust and cooler got caught on these, this group of trees and then it flowed on. Uh, and so what was left was, was the crust at the top and then a coating 
on the, that was chilled by the, by the trees. And of course, the top of the trees burned off. But this thing, uh, most of these structures, if, they only, if there's only one tree, they're very evanescent things. They, they fall over quickly. But this one, is, with all these uh, supports, has stayed around for quite a while. And if the lava reaches the sea, it plunges in, and it adds an average of 500 acres a year to the Big Island. Hmm. Olympic National Park, uh, the coin for that uh, was in 2011. Popular Park it has three areas. One is the rainforest here. It has these beautiful banana slugs. They get up to about 10 inches. <laughs> There's the coastal area with eagles, which are too small to see here. And there's the mountain area with the peaks and the, and the lakes and the rivers. Mount Rainier. That's, this is one of my, one of my second favorite. And, and Carol, uh, daughter Carol's favorite for sure. So this was chosen uh, as, as the, the cover for the film by Ken Burns, uh, National Parks, America's Best Idea. Wildfire lupins and, and other flowers, and the view of, of Mount Rainier. <clears throat> uh, Karen Hibbert went uh, with a family group there, and when I saw this picture of this campsite, mm -hmm. we, we just had to go. <laughs> so, apply for a permit, um, and here's, here's the, the uh, location of the campsite. I tried, tried to put them. Uh, about eight miles apart, um, and 4,000 feet average. So it's something that we could do uh, at, in, in a day. And uh, but give us time to see other things, see side sites. You know, that was practical. Now I applied um, for it for this, and what we ended up with, well, sorry, what we ended up with was. Uh, Permit that was two weeks earlier than, than what, I, what I really wanted. I've given a number of days, but what we ended up with, with these sites, but two weeks earlier. Now, we did, we did a, a, a trip around the uh, parks of, of uh, Washington, and we stopped by Rainier to check out the logistics of where we can cache our food and what, what about fuel. It turns out you can't cache any fuel, so we have to carry everything with you. Mm -hmm. all the fuel with you. Well, we went up just towards Spray Park, um, and so it has, it's been hardened here through the marsh, um, but the wildflowers bloom, it was just, the weather was very pleasant, it was just lovely. So uh, we got our, uh, our permit for, uh, in the week, it came out uh, the week before that, um, earlier than I wanted. And when we got there, what we found was this. <laughs> no trail could be seen, and nobody had gone through here uh, yet for the season. There were no tracks to fall, so we had to give up on this. There was no way that we could do it all. There are no signs of the trees. It's all on the ground, so uh, we had to give up on this route. Uh, so we went back, and then the next day, uh, we, we tried an alternative route. We got down to lower elevation. Was where we started was five feet of snow. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell where the trail was, but there were some footprints around. We eventually got uh, got in the right direction, but we got to places like this, and there's just no no way of telling where the trail was. It just didn't make sense to do it. So we abandoned it. We abandoned backpacking and did uh, a bunch of day hikes for, for I think it was four more days. So on the, uh, right on the, the Wonderland Trail is Upper Reflection Lake and Lower Reflection Lake. Beautiful sites. And this is from the trail. So we've got the wildflowers at the lower elevation and views of the, the trees and the mountains. And there are just drifts of these avalanche lilies in some places. This is a view down on one of the camps. It's near this lake here, Sunrise Camp. So, the camp has got the view all around you. The 
trees and mountains and many mountains above them. Lovely, just lovely sites. Uh, the, the problem about getting the sites for uh, on the veneer is that some of them have only two camps, uh, tent sites. So once those are filled, you can't stop there. You can't, you can't camp at large. So if, uh, if you want to go there, you have, uh, it's not available, you have to go further to, to some, uh, some other site. Uh, some other site. And I've read of people getting uh, trips of 26 miles, um, 10,000 feet, uh, to do between sites. Environments uh, fighting. So, there are other things to do in the park too. So, it's the Glacier Vista Trail. Um, and again, wildflowers in, in profusion. So, the I think that this is in Squally here. There are 25 major glaciers now in Mountain National Park. Uh, the Nisqually Glacier in the 20s used to fill the valley here. And practically from the same place, there's no trace of it. It's about three quarters of a mile back up the valley. Another area that's been protected from the lava flows for, for over a thousand years. So the road was a big area. Huge streets there. Uh, here's a view from the Pacific Crest Trail. The Pacific Crest Trail runs along the east side of the park, and so it's looking over at the high point of the Wonder Valley. And I've got across the, uh, the River Squally River uh, is a pinnacle peak. So it's uh, a lot of free. But it gives you just great views in all directions, south and, and the upper near it says. So we say goodbye to our great Jays here. And that's it. Say that uh, that the bison had the most encounters uh, with people or the most accidents because I can remember going through uh, Yellowstone and the bison came out and just walked in front of the car and didn't bother with with us at all. Well, so, some of them are well. Um, people. The problem is that people approach. Uh, in one case, uh, there was a story of. So uh, a father that smeared a white uh, bison with, with uh, uh, jam in order to, to get, uh, to, sorry, uh, smeared a, a child with jam in order to uh, get close to the white But it's, uh, it's uh, or some are tame, but the others are you know, quite wild. Uh, and, and they approach too close. They, they can be very aggressive and Did you, you, you told us about your favorites. Do you have like a least favorite? I'm just curious. Oh, well, <laughs> there's hot springs and the park. In the middle of the city, all the springs, uh, most, almost all of them have been shut down. They've been capped and the water has drawn away for municipal purposes. <laughs> <laughs> there were the grand old um, bathhouses that are they're closed and shut down now, uh, and they're renting them. So well, that was a kind of giant discount. We did not stay with <laughs> So what is it like, an archaeological site now? No, well, just a historical site. But yeah. The pathways are there and the buildings are there. <laughs> uh, but, but it's not much to see. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, there is a mountain there, uh, a small mountain. And the concessioner has is a tower there. And, and you can walk and pay to look in a telescope down on Bill Clinton's Broadway Home. I just wanted to confirm one thing you said. You said Mount Whitney was within Kings Canyon? Uh, no, that's Sequoia. It is within that park. Bound it, is, it is within the park. Yes. So I thought on the east, side, the east side of the park. Okay. Yes. 
Well, the, uh, the, the organization that designates these uh, you know, often cultural but sometimes uh, natural sites around the world, uh, it's very hard to get onto the, the list. But I don't remember how many are on the court list. Something like 14. So it's, it's a, a real honor to be designated. Well, it's been going on, but the trip we did in 2011, uh, we arranged it so that we could get around the group. It started south first, because it would be uh, before it got hot, and then it crossed the country to the southwest, and then, it, then I went north, hoping that it would be uh, defrosted by then. <laughs> in actuality, it wasn't. Uh, so, uh, but, yeah, well, when we go on trips, you can. What can we see besides what we did? When we first went to, to Rainier, went out to, to Washington, intending to see all of the parks that are in that area. So are you tent, tent camping the whole time? Uh, most of the time we, we, we tent camp. Uh, in uh, Yellowstone, you can't tent camp. You have to have hard camping in the, in the north. And, and occasionally we want to stay in the north, something like Philip Baker, in the historic building. But normally we, we would. Uh, and the reason for that is, is that uh, well, what, uh, the way we usually do it, we tend to come in in the afternoon, we hike, we can claim our campsite, hike, have dinner, occasionally we might do something else. Like then in the morning, we break camp and we hike again in that park. And then we would travel uh, during the middle of the heat of the day. And when the, picture, when the sun is not so good for photography, we spend that time. Now, well, some places, of course, we're spending multiple days, but if we're just going to spend a day, that's what we'd like to do. Pam, you got a question over here? Yes. Yeah. I can't believe in the survey that you had in the beginning that Bryce uh, didn't make the top five. Uh, well, uh, it wasn't even that. probably enough. got four votes. But, yeah. but, I but, can't uh, believe it. No, it, uh, it, it did not. Uh, mm -hmm. also, it, obviously, it's high on some people's list. Yeah. Uh, but not, but not, not on all of those. Yeah. Yes? How long did it take you to uh, climb down into the Grand Canyon, and then how long did it take you to climb out? Uh, it takes you longer to climb out, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, it depends which route you're going. Uh, let's see. We, uh, we backpack. We did reach like 6.30, and we got down to the river about 11.30. Something like that, about five, five hours down here. Uh, when we backpacked out from Phantom Ranch, from Phantom Campground, actually, um, we didn't get out of here at six o'clock or something like that. Yeah. We drove to, to Williams, we got a, got a hotel, and got in. Of course, we got on the second floor, and the legs were so <laughs> Yeah, so it, it fence. And, and let's see, uh, for Hermit Creek, so that's a, that's a 4,200 foot descent. Uh, we got in, it was starting to get dark, you know, about 5, 5 o'clock. Did you say it took you 12 hours to climb out? I didn't get the no, time. Uh, no, it would, well, it would have been nine, probably nine. Up to nine or ten hours. Different days. That, that's, that's bad. Right. Yeah. Did you ever see elk and eagles or bears? We were in Yellowstone when the wolves were first released, but of course we didn't see them. The humans were, were you know, live the area, walk, walk off. <coughs> In fact, the, the cages were so arranged that they, were, they couldn't see their, their handles. The design was to not have contact with humans. Uh, so we haven't, haven't seen the herd you know, of coyotes for the week. We actually haven't seen them. That's a good question. 
and it depends. Um, so something that's wilderness, if you're, if you're out in the wilderness, it's very difficult to, to get uh, the reservations. Uh, the general rule is five months in advance, and uh, sometimes it's a lottery, or sometimes it, things will fill. Well, in, in for instance, in Yosemite, uh, it usually fills uh, in the first couple minutes that it's over. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's one. That one is by internet. So you say, make sure your clock is accurate mm -hmm. because it fills so rapidly. Uh, they, they've got lotteries and others, but the, the demand is, is much more than can possibly be filled. Now, the large companies have a lot of capacity, and so you might be fine for a month and a half. Uh, on the other hand, there's one place I, I called up for a reservation. This was the Black Canyon of the, the Gunnison. He says, we don't take reservations because we've been filled only once. <laughs> so it, it varies. Uh, Grand Canyon is uh, five months in advance, and we tried repeatedly to get where we wanted to go. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to have a campsite that had water, and there was no way I could get to it. So I had to accept, I had to, accept uh, to camp in, in a dry, in a dry camp. So it, it varies, and uh, the, the internet will tell you, give you a guide about the reservations. Uh, some places, uh, they, they, fill up, uh, they open 13 months in advance and they're, and they're, they're they fill. They have a ranch, and a ranch is difficult to get to. Again, the campsites that are, are I mean, we have driven in. We've driven in, in on the um, yeah. Been able to get something. Right. There was road construction there, and I got out at about 6.30 in the morning, and I lined up with the other cars at the barrier, mm -hmm. and then raced down to the, the grant campground in order to get a place, and there were four cars after me, after me that got it, but mm -hmm. it filled up as soon as it could get there. Yeah, there it is. Get five, as I say, you kind of think five months. Which means that if you want to, want to go to uh, Yosemite uh, from uh, May 15th to June 14th, uh, you have to do it by January 15th.